This type of exercise is a different kind of clears. It can be attacking clears, it can be defensive clears and anything between. When you play a clear, the first we are looking at is obviously the grip. And what we're talking about is what we here in Denmark anyway is calling a universal grip. And uh, second to that, of course, it's, it's about having a loose grip. So you are able to change a little bit of direction in wherever you want to play your shot. So the grip is obviously very important. And uh, not only that, we need to have a loose grip. Play with what we call finger power. The next step playing the clear would be to make sure that your elbow is coming up. So it's, it's all about, again, creating space around you. So get your elbow up where you want to play your shot and of course we will be looking at the shuttle coming towards you but it's all about getting that elbow up and uh, making sure that uh, we are ready to play the shot when you have your your elbow up and you're ready to play your shot it's obviously a rotation of your forearm so we've got the racket up here and we are starting to rotate the forearm here and the shot in the defensive clear is most likely played just around here where the attacking clear is played a little bit further in front of your body. And of course, all about getting, again, the shots played as high as possible above your head. So the whole shot is forehand grip, elbow up, the rotation of the forearm, but I also think it's extremely important that it's a rotation of your torso, your upper body at the same time. So you're not just playing with the arm, but you're playing with your full upper body at the same time. So we see the grip, elbow up, rotation, and rotation of your upper body as well, and then you play the shot. When you're using the attacking clear, you have to consider very carefully what kind of situation are you in when you're starting to use it. If you want to play an attack and clear down the line, it could be in what I call a 50-50 situation where you're fighting for initiative. However, if it's a 50-50 situation, fighting for initiative, and you choose to go for an attack and clear cross court, that will be not a wise decision because your opponent will be in place and can intercept it quite easily. So it's all about how you use it, when you use it, and your choices are going to make a big difference. So for me, I think it's very, very important that when you go for attacking clears, you most likely keep them straight down the line, unless if you're really on top of the rally, you can pump the attacking clear cross court as well, but that means your opponent has to be out of balance. The height of the attacking clear is obviously also very important. It also depends who you're actually playing. Who is on the other side? Is it a tall guy? Is that Victor Axelsen? Or is it a shorter player like Akane Yamaguchi? It will be different kind of choices, different kind of height to your attacking clear that have to be taken into account as well. When you play the attacking clear, you can easily see whether it's successful or not. If it's successful, it actually means that you put your opponent under a lot of pressure. It can either be that they really have to bend down trying to, to get the next shot, or it can be that they simply have to turn around and play a more defensive shot from the back of the court, and that could be backhand or forehand like this. But it's all about whether you can induce some pressure into this rally and really, really put your opponent uh, into a difficult situation. The danger playing a attacking clear is obviously you either play it at the wrong time, which means that your opponent is way too much into balance, control and everything, and it's too easy for the opponent to actually intercept it. So your choice of attacking clear is extremely important. Again, if we are talking about a defensive clear, there are many types of defensive clears. There's the one that is way, way up and coming down with snow, as what we say, or there's just a clear that will make sure that your opponent is actually standing on the back line as and when they hit the shot. Normally, you will play the one where you just ensure that your opponent is standing on the back line playing the shot. And of course, when you're going for this defensive clear, I would say it's, it's a good shot to play when you want to go cross court because it ensures that your opponent can't intercept the shot. Just like uh, any shot, there are advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the advantage, uh, 
of course with the defensive clear is that you're making sure your opponent is hopefully standing on the back line as and when he or she plays the shot. The disadvantage of the shot is that uh, it's sort of taking the pace out of the game. And we all know that badminton is, is a pressure game. It's all about adding enough pace and pressure onto your opponent, either to force them into error or, of course, to make direct winners. Hi, my name is Morten Frost and if you like what you see, if you like the videos, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel.